And if you asked me a couple of years ago what the US was doing about this, so I get I have lots of US clients and they particularly ask, well, do we need to worry about what we're doing on the US? And if we were asked about this a few years ago, generally there's not that much to talk about. Things have happened very thick and fast over the last couple of years. So while we don't have, we still don't have a comprehensive federal privacy framework in the US, not one that we would call comprehensive anyway. U.S. state privacy is really beginning to ramp up. We have multiple states now that have their own U.S. privacy laws either in force or in the process of entering into force. The U.S. state privacy pre treats cookies slightly different to we do in, in the EU. I mentioned that cookies are a separate set of law to the GDPR. You need not to have personal data within a particular cookie for it to draw the consent requirements. Well, cookies themselves in many state privacy legislation are specifically regulated as a class. So for California, they are one of the specific regulated class of personal information. The U.S., even though it takes, it takes a very similar approach to the EU in terms of the information that must be given, but it's what we would call an opt-out regime. So typically, it requires the ability for individuals to opt out or exercise their rights to say no doesn't necessarily mean that you have to you have to get their consent, their active consent up front. And for those who are familiar with some of the regulations around the sale of data, it manifests itself in lots of different ways in different member states, obviously California being the most famous in the do not sell. A sale of data typically means any passing of, well, typically the cookie scenario will involve any passage of data between two websites for the, or two, or a website and an advertiser or a website and an ad exchange for, for targeting and marketing purposes. They typically meet that, the test for what is a sale. Other thing to maybe point out in the US is use of geolocation data. So the US has some very specific rules around tracking and particularly accurate use of accurate information for geolocation tracking. Again, when you apply that in the context of a targeting or retargeting activity, the rules are almost similar to what we have in the EU. You're almost moving over into an opt-in regime in that particular instance. The penultimate thing to mention is this concept of what we call an universal opt-out mechanism. Effectively, again, something that I've all been asked from the EU sector is technically not actually compliant in the EU, but this concept around dealing with death by cookie pop-ups some of the US regulators have kind of caught on to this and thought, well, wouldn't if someone was could interact with a single plugin in their banner and send a signal out to all of the websites that they land on, what they do not want or what they do want, wouldn't that be great? And that's what's born out of the universal opt-out mechanism. This is seen as quite a popular thing by many of the of, of the states. And uh, they all will, will either California, which already has this in, in place, or most from 2025 onwards, I think Texas is the first to come down the line if memory serves, will mandate that websites have to res have to basically respond to universal opt-out signals. So effectively, if someone is using a plugin in their, on their browser, you as a website need to need to respond to those signals. And then I mentioned litigation in the EU. Well, I think you can't really talk about US legislative developments without talking about lit litigation, predominantly given that new regulatory regimes tend to move leaps and bounds in the US through civil rights actions, particularly. We've had a whole range of, of class actions come out of the US on the birth of some of these US state privacy laws. One particular interest one is, is the more recent class actions of using somewhat fairly legacy uh, wiretapping laws. I think there's, there are class actions in multiple states, the major ones being California, New York, Washington, Illinois particularly. But, in, but just to kind of pick on California, for example, under their existing wiretap laws, you need to have permission or consent, opt-in consent, to be able to record a conversation between two parties that you are not a party to. Some creative lawyers in the US have, have extended that into a, well, does that not also cover the use of trackers and pixels? With varying success in the courts, but it very, it's very interesting in showing where the, where the exposure and the pressure comes from. The argument is if some of these cases are do prove successful, the question is whether the US does actually move to an opt-in regime similar to what we have in the EU.